learning how to follow a man's leadership where you are also honoring your needs and feelings by communicating them properly, it is going to get you everything that you've ever wanted in your love life. But for many women, they have difficulty following a man's leadership because they've got this judgment, this belief that following the man makes her weak, makes her less than, makes her inferior in some kind of way. And nothing could be further from the truth. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. Hello, my name is Zach Rohde, and I am here to lead you into creating the relationship of your dreams by learning how to inspire a man into cherishing you by you using your feminine energy and using what I call feminine communication. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure that you hit the subscription button below, hit the notification bell, and be sure to like this video because I'm going to make sure it's a good one for you. So, Leading and following, man's leading, woman's following, just like a beautiful tango dance, right? Think of that tango dance. The man is in charge. He's leading everything. He is the one that's moving the dance forward. It's his vision of the dance, and the woman is just flowing. She's just letting go, following his lead. Nothing inferior about that for the woman, right? She's not inferior. She's not less than. Nobody would look at that dance and be like, oh, my God, that woman has no self-respect for herself, She's just following that man's lead on the dance floor. That girl needs to really get some self-esteem. Nobody would say that. That would be ridiculous. And yet, when it comes to a relationship dynamic or dating dynamic, a lot of women, and also men today, unfortunately, because of feminism, just our call it modern day culture, has indoctrinated men and women to believe that this is wrong in some way, that it's outdated, that it makes a woman less than, that a man has no right to be leading a woman. Uh, we're taught that men and women should basically be leading each other, which typically leads to butting heads in a relationship. Like <laughs> it's either one person's much more in charge or there's going to be a lot of butting heads. That's just the way that it works, which is, by the way, what happened in my marriage with my wife where I picked an extremely strong-headed woman. Uh, and at first, there was some serious attraction and connection because of that. But uh, later on, and especially once my masculine instinct came online, it created huge problems for us because we're both trying to lead. So we're butting heads all the time, which resulted in us getting in conflicts. And it meant that we had a lot of unmet needs. And what are a man and woman's needs? Well, our core fundamental need for a man is to be respected, to be seen as a leader, to be trusted as a leader. And for a woman, it's to be cherished by the leader. It's to receive the provision and protection from the leader the care from the leader, the adoration from the leader, okay? Those are your needs. Uh, so, I mean, as a woman, that's what your need is, right? To be cherished. And if you're not fully connected to that need, if you believe that that need is wrong in some way, you keep watching this channel because I'm going to make sure that you get it fully that it is okay to have this need. There's nothing wrong with it. It's natural. It's normal. You're perfectly, you're perfect the way that you are, okay? So, here's the thing. Many people in our society, just in general, we see following as like an inferior role. It's like a follower is a sheep. A follower takes no skill, no effort, right? It's like we celebrate leaders, but we don't celebrate followers. We look down on followers and we look up at leaders. And, and when I say look down on, I mean look down on in a negative way. When a man should be looking down at a woman, not just physically, but also energetically. But I'm talking about it in a beautiful, adoring way. Like the way that I look down at my wife or the way that I look down at my daughter is like, I'm here to protect you, to care for you. You're so special to me. You're so valuable to me that I'm here to use my resources, my provision, my time and energy to take care of you. That's looking down at someone in a healthy, beautiful way. That's the way that a man should be looking down at his woman, not as like you're less than, right? And a woman should be looking up at a man as like, you're my hero. You're my protector. You're basically my the person that's taking care of me and I'm here to receive that and I'm here to respect you for that, to follow that. So let's look at a, a new way of seeing following. There is passive following 
and blind following, like most people in society are followers, whether they're men or women, and we follow the government blindly, that's a problem. We follow what the government and corporations tell us to believe. That's a problem, right? There is no respect in that because it's being done totally blindly. It's doing. It's being done out of indoctrination. It's being done uh, from a place of lack of self-worth in ourselves, not connecting to our power, to our worth as humans, whether we're men or women. But there is a different way of following that is coming from a place of empowerment. And when I'm talking about women here, right, we'll call this feminine empowerment, but it's not the empowerment that you're taught by like the goddess boss babe influencers that are just going to keep you masculinized or masculinize you further and then only attract emasculated men. Feminine empowerment is learning how to let go of all control, open your heart up, communicate yourself vulnerably, share all of your needs and feelings without trying to get any outcome at all. And you are so naturally inspiring to the masculine, to a man, that he steps up and starts taking care of you, protecting you, providing for you without you trying to do anything at all. And it's not because of your physical beauty. It's not because you're trying to seduce him, manipulate him, play games with him, anything like that. You are fully, truly letting go. And he just wants to take care of you because of that, because he can feel your worth in that. But the key is you're communicating your feelings and needs. And one of the big problems that women have, this is the biggest problem that I see with my academy clients in my relationship, your dreams academy is they don't communicate their feelings and needs. Or when they do, they do it in a more masculine way, an immature way. They, they judge, they blame, they lead, they initiate, they accuse. And when I, so when I say masculine way, by the way, I don't mean like that's what a man should be doing. I mean masculine as in she's trying to get an outcome. Okay, I, I teach men how to lead in a loving, devotional way to get their needs met. So when a woman's being masculine... It's typically, it's always unhealthy for a woman to be in her masculine with the man unless like the man is truly not capable of caring for her, in which case she shouldn't even be in a relationship with that man. But say it was like your ex-husband or something and you have to for the kids, you have to interact with them. Uh, then there would be a time and place to be masculine. But any man that you choose to be with, you shouldn't be masculine ever. You should never be trying to get any kind of outcome. You can want outcomes, you can desire outcomes, of course, but you're not trying to get them from a man. Instead, you are just sharing everything that's coming up for you. That would be, an, uh, and, and doing it in a respectful, vulnerable way. And the way that I teach, using feminine communication, okay? This is important, because if you do it the wrong way, you're not gonna get that care, you're not gonna inspire it. This is what I teach, All by the way, before we continue, all of my links are in the description below. You just open up that description, you're gonna see everything. You're gonna see my books, you're gonna see my free Facebook group, my dating course, my free webinar, my uh, free polarity training video, my academy, my masterclass, everything, right? There, there's so many resources that you have available to you and a, some of them are free and some of them are really cheap. Some of them are like my academy, they're definitely more expensive, but obviously it's the most transformational. Pick something that resonates with you for now, right? You'll be called to something if you're really resonating with this work, with what I'm telling you. Check it out and start learning more. This is how you're going to make these shifts. So back to what I'm talking about, being an active follower, a healthy active follower as a woman means you're not just passively waiting for a man to give you what you need. It's never going to happen. It is never going to happen if you do that. Because why would a woman be fully passive? Only if she's not fully in her self-worth, if she's afraid of communicating her needs or feelings in some way, because she's afraid that if she communicates, that's going to make her a burden, that she's going to be less attractive, that a man's going to lose interest in her, that he's going to be angry at her, right? Where's that coming from? Well, mainly unhealthy childhood patterns where your needs were not fully met in childhood, your feelings were not fully held, you weren't given that safe space to fully share, to be vulnerable, and now you're carrying that on with the man. That's really typical, right? That's what we see from our academy students across the board. And so an active follower is going to be sharing everything all the time. If you feel sad, if you feel angry, if you feel shame, if you feel guilty, if you feel needy, like, yeah, if you feel horny, if you feel... Some of these feelings might be easier to communicate than others. Some might be really hard, right? Like sharing that you feel needy, sharing that you feel anger, 
you know, those tend to be the hardest ones for a woman to communicate. And all of them might be hard to communicate when, especially when you do it vulnerably, not from your head up here, but from your heart where you're exposing yourself and then learning how to actually communicate that and learning how to communicate what the problem is that you're, you're experiencing, communicate what your need is and learning to do it all in a vulnerable way that inspires a man. That's being an active follower does that make a woman inferior if she's doing that? No, that's what makes her equal to a man. But it's equal in a totally different way than we think about it, right? It's not the same. It's like feminism, and even a lot of like the spiritual movement, it's like making men and women the same. In the spiritual movement, it's all like, oh, let's become really balanced in our masculine and feminine. And then in the feminist movement, it's, you know, we're exactly the same other than being skin differences in our genitals and stuff. But we're fundamentally different. We are equal as far as our needs. And when I say we, like both a man and woman, our needs are equal. They're equally important. You as a woman, you're intrinsically just as important as a man is, even if he's in the leading role. But our roles are completely different, or they should be. They should be in a healthy dynamic. The man's role is to lead and take care of a woman, protect her, provide for her, lead her, guide her, teach her, cherish her. A woman's role is to express herself vulnerably. It is to inspire. It's to receive. It's to follow. And that doesn't mean that she can't teach him anything. Just she's not trying to teach, not with the intention of teaching. But of course, a a man's going to learn a ton from his woman without her trying, right? Like my my wife or, you know, my clients, for example, so much of what I have learned about women has come from working with women. They're not trying to teach me, but I'm understanding their needs better when I don't do the best job or when they share something that I didn't know. That's how a man learns from his woman. And that's how his woman teaches is by her getting really vulnerable and exposing herself and sharing her problems and her needs and her feelings all the time. If you hide that stuff, either by just avoiding or by going into some other kind of control pattern like, you know, nagging or blaming or judging or whatever, then a man's not going to learn from you. The only thing he's going to learn is that you're irritating and that he doesn't want to spend as much time with you. And that's really not the lesson that you want uh, a man to get from you, right? You you want him to learn just how beautiful you truly are. And you are so beautiful underneath all of those control patterns. Your heart is so beautiful, but you just need to learn how to show it. You need to learn how to be an active follower because an active follower is a woman who's fully in her self-worth. It's a woman who's truly being vulnerable, who's not afraid to share everything that's in her heart. She's not going to hide, uh, avoid rejection or hide from judgment or avoid any kind of negative reaction. She's just going to put it all out there and whatever happens, happens because she knows that she's worthy of a man who's going to take care of her. And if the man that she's with isn't going to do it, some other man will, right? It's, it's having full faith in your self-worth. So in answer to this question, is it sexist for a man to lead a woman? No, it is not. And a woman is not communicating a lack of self-worth if she is following the man. If and only if the man is leading the woman out of care to cherish her and the woman is following the man out of respect, not just for him, but also for herself, for her own heart and her own needs. So she needs to be getting that care when she's communicating vulnerably because a man's not entitled to leading just because he's a man. A woman's not going to follow just because she's a woman. She does need to be vulnerable no matter what. But if a man's choosing not to lead, then lead with devotion, then she shouldn't be following out of respect. And so no, it is not sexist for a man to lead his woman with devotion. If you would like to be led with devotion, if you would love to be cherished by a man, if you would love to be able to inspire a man into taking care of you in this way, where your love life, your dating life, your relationship, your marriage becomes like a tango dance, essentially, where a man is leading with competency and care for you, then be sure to check out the description below this video where I post all of my links to all of my offers, my academy, my Polarity Masterclass, my webinar, my free uh, Facebook group, my books, everything. Go there, click on a link, start learning more.
you can completely transform your love life. You can inspire that devotion of a man who is leading you. But you got to take action.